Hello. Can you hear me? All right. We're on. We're on. Okay. Um, all right. Dr. Cott or Alexander? Alex. Or Alex. Let's do Alex. Wonderful. Okay. So, thank you for being here. We'll get into a little bit about your career. We've had some really interesting discussions already this morning, so I'm excited to share that with everybody. Um, Again, I'm Molly Kane, and uh, I am not the AI expert, so I'm going to dig into your brain. So everyone here... Be careful. Uh, <laughs> prepare yourselves. So everyone here has a wide variety of awareness and knowledge about AI. Who here feels like they are also an expert in AI? Okay. So we have that assessment. Okay, we're all on the same level. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We're all we're all going somewhere. Um, okay. So there are vendors here in the room that want to work with Army Research Laboratories. There are federal employees who may be working in AI, or may wish to, or don't understand what careers of the future there are available, and there's everything in between. So give us a, a unifier to start the discussion. And tell us your, um, I, know, I don't know if I want you to define AI, but give it a whirl. I don't want to define AI. <laughs> there were so many people, very bright people trying to do it before, and, uh, and uh, I'm not going to succeed where they failed. Uh, you know, one big problem with AI, of course, is that as soon as it works, people say it's a problem of receding horizon. You read about it probably. As soon as uh, it works, people say it's not AI, it's just an algorithm. Um, <laughs> I was told that in 1960s uh, there was a joke, if it works, it's uh, pattern recognition. If it doesn't, it's AI. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, we live in a really amazing time. Um, uh, back in 1970s, 1980s, hundreds of PhD dissertations were written about how to find a route on a map with complex traffic, uh, with uh, closures on the map, and so on. This was PhD dissertation after PhD dissertation. It was a major problem in AI. Today, you're using this AI every day um, on your GPS app, you have no idea that it has inside of it routing algorithms that are derived from that work on AI. And uh, you don't need any education in AI. You don't need to know that it is AI. You are just turning left, you are turning right where you're being told, and, and you're good. Uh, you are listening to AI. Think about it. Think about it. 20 years ago, to assume that you will be um, following the directions of an AI machine would be a, a science fiction. Uh, it, if, even right now it sounds a little bit like science fiction, but you're doing it every day. Alexa, can you please turn on uh, this uh, such and such music? You're doing it every day. This is interesting. This is an amazing time that we live in. So you've it, just told us all that probably part of our work days there's AI involved. So, are we all AI workers? And, wow, that, def that again, another definition. What is an AI worker? <laughs> uh, there are very few of us who are actually truly, truly working on AI. Uh, most of us are and should be working on how you, we can apply the best available technology to the mission of our organizations. Uh, I hear too much of talk about, oh, what can we do with AI? Ask not what you can do with AI. Someone please tweet that. Ask what AI can do for the mission of your organization. <laughs> um, so you've been quoted as calling, well, so you did mention buzzword. We all know that the, from politicals to all of us, we use AI even if we're not really aware of what it completely can be used for or is in use right now. Would you call that irrational exuberance? Yes, I did call it ex irrational exuberance. <laughs> um, and uh, it is, 
you know, we do disservice to AI. I love AI. I was bitten by the AI bug back in 1980s and mid-1980s and was working on it on and off uh, all these years. Uh, it is a wonderful uh, area of uh, computer science and beyond uh, computer science. It has done a lot of useful things and will do amazing things. But irrational exuberance, over-expectations, overselling, boosterism, all this does no good to, for, for the progress of, of that field. So let's not be, um, the, let's not be the part of the uh, snake oil seller crowd uh, uh, for AI. Let's be realistic about AI. Let's focus on what it can do for the specific tasks, spe specific missions of your organization. Uh, if it's appropriate, it's appropriate. If it's not appropriate, don't sell it. Certainly don't oversell it. Too much of it is going on, and it usually leads to yet another AI winter. Many winters ago, I started looking into that. Many AI winters, I started to looking into that. And uh, so let's not do that. So you're, you, you've been working on it since the mid-'80s. Um, clearly, you don't think this is a fad. It's, it's not new. It's been around. So how do you feel right now as all of us, like these kinds of events weren't happening back then. People like me weren't interested in AI until quite recently. So are you excited about this trend? Are you excited about being, it being a big buzzword? Or do you have warnings for us? You know, I'm, I'm a bit anxious. I'm afraid that there will be yet another wave of disappointment and people are saying, oh, this doesn't work, it's just a bunch of uh, buzzwords it, uh, and they will switch attention to something else. I would like to have steady, um, non-exuberant attention to AI and its use in practical uh, good work that all of your organizations need. Uh, rather than talk about AI, we really need to work on AI with less words. You know, look at, uh, look at uh, this room. Uh, how many hundreds of person hours will be spent here this morning? Uh, all of you are paid, right? You all have salaries, right? If all this money were put together and uh, invested into actually developing a uh, practical AI application, that would perhaps be better than us talking about AI. Um, just a thought, just a thought. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not suggesting you need to leave this room. <laughs> At least stay for the rest of our talk. Um, okay, so to that point, how should, we, how should everyone in this room be spending time caring about AI? When they leave today, what do you want them to know? How do you want them to contribute to Army Research Laboratories, for instance? Uh, those who want to give me business cards after this event are certainly welcome to do so. I will try to do what I can do. Um, we, by the way, uh, we at the Army Research Laboratory, we are very actively pursuing a um, business model uh, called Open Campus. We invite um, organizations uh, of all kinds, um, government, uh, uh, academia, industry, uh, international, uh, to work with us uh, through CRADAS, uh, collaborative research and development agreements, and so on. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of these CRADAS, and many of them are very productive. So uh, if you're interested in something like that, please talk to me. Uh, some of this work is in the AI uh, world, so this is very useful. How would I suggest that you approach AI is, as I already mentioned, take a look at what tasks you may need or may want to automate in your organization. If it is not something that you want to automate, AI is not going to help very much. Uh, if it is already being attempted to be uh, automated, you probably need to ask yourself, why did it fail before? AI is not a magic pixie dust, dust that you can sprinkle on your problem and it suddenly will get solved. It is not. Uh, so ask yourself why it failed before and why would it succeed now if you apply AI? 
AI is not a magic word that you can simply pronounce and it will happen. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, look at the available tools. There's so many excellent tools already available out there. You can apply them, you should talk to vendors, you should be very hard-nosed and skeptical when you're talking to vendors. I was one of those vendors uh, back in 1980s, uh, early 90s, uh, and um, I know that people who talk to me should have been more hard-nosed and ask more difficult questions, so please do that. So, okay, let's dig into that a little bit more. Who here is a federal employee or, oh, awesome. Who here? So you didn't pay, right? <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, how can they, they are getting pitched regardless of level, role, budget capability, anything. They're getting pitched every time they're outside on AI solutions and technology. And there are probably some great solutions and technologies and, and folks selling products right now in this room. So how can that relationship be successful? What should a, a federal employee, a government employee, or someone who's purchasing those solutions know from a due diligence perspective without having to deep dive into AI? Give them a couple of questions that they should ask to expose the snake oil. Well, the obvious question is, why do you call this AI? Most vendors have difficult time answering why they call their product AI. Overwhelming majority of what's, is, what's under the hood of their product is all good IT uh, and uh, the statistical analysis. And that is perfectly okay. If it does the work for your problem, it's perfectly okay. Um, you know, uh, there is, uh, in every uh, successful solution, there is an uh, ounce of uh, AI inspiration and tons of conventional IT perspiration. You uh, probably need to know that, and if it's conventional IT and it solves your problem, very good. Don't resist. Don't, don't refuse to take yes for an answer. Uh, and uh, so, AI is very often not as the best solution, and therefore ask very hard question about what's the AI, AI, AI there and why it uh, needs to be there. Uh, you will be surprised at the answer or more often lack of an answer. So in researching for our conversation, um, we all remember when Mark Zuckerberg was chatting with the technologically challenged folks, we won't name names, um, he mentioned AI seven times unprompted, and I know that there was a variety of understanding in that room, and there's a variety of understanding or misunderstanding in leadership today, the guys who have to make the decisions, the men and women. So how do we talk to our leaders about AI or vice versa? How does the leader start to make decisions around it? Should they be? AI is interesting in that it uh, um, uh, elicits amazingly irrational uh, responses. Uh, we are, we are, uh, this is the first time when we're facing something that actually exhibits intelligence that, that, that is so similar to our own. It's like we're looking in the mirror and we're afraid uh, at what we're seeing there. We don't like what we're seeing there. It's not nearly as beautiful as we thought. Um, and uh, so people talk strange things about AI. People talk about, uh, well, AI will destroy the world. Uh, people, serious people, um, captains of our industry are uh, spouting this kind of things, which I personally do not believe at all. Uh, at the same time, we do need to recognize that this is a revolution in uh, technology, and it is a revolution perhaps in the human existence as a whole, because this is the first time ever that, and not the physical 
existence, some physical aspect of our existence being automated or assisted like steam power or gunpowder and so on. This is the first time in human history that we are being assisted in our thinking, in our intellectual activities. This is unique. This never happened before. This is amazing. So that is going to be revolutionary. So there are two sides to this. One, let's not over-exaggerate. On the other hand, it is revolutionary. So um, pulling that thread a little bit more, we had a great conversation earlier. There's a historical resistance to anything that drives change. Can I get you to go a little bit around that conversation that we just had? Um, you mentioned steam power. So we've seen this situation before, not necessarily with something so advanced, but talk about the historical background of this resistance and what we're experiencing right. now. So steam power is, is a bit of an analogy. Between 1820 and 1870, the uh, United States have undergone that, this dramatic transformation uh, in many, many respects, economic, social, and so on. And it was driven to a large extent by steam power, by the availability of uh, steamboats and uh, steam engines uh, for the factories and, of course, the railroads. This was an enormous transformative force for this country. And uh, uh, it was assisted, fortunately, by fairly sane and reasonable actions of the governments, local governments, uh, communities, federal government who had to institute some laws, who had to put some sanity into that whole process, had to govern it somehow, regulate it somehow, and they did a remarkably good job about it. It's, it's worth looking into that. It's worth seeing this as an example of a sort. And remember, this was done in face of all kind of fears and, and uh, uh, scare, scare uh, scary uh, expectations. Oh, you know, the, uh, those uh, railroads, they will kill people, they will kill uh, cows, they will uh, take away land from people, uh, nobody will be able to get from point A to point B. Uh, they move at such high speed that people will actually um, will be unable to breathe. There was a scientific argument of that sort, no kidding. Uh, and all this was overcome. This is an interesting example of perhaps how we need to deal with AI. Okay, so um, I do a lot of Molly Pro Sports opinions, so I'm going to throw one at you. Um, I have a theory that the conversation about our workers today being scared of AI taking their jobs is not really what they're saying. Do you agree or disagree? I don't see that, frankly. You know, the people who may feel the most uh, immediate threat would be truck drivers, right? Truck drivers. And even they, I don't think, uh, exhibiting any particular fear of that. Uh, they realize fully that um, this actually will be very probably helpful to the tracking industry. And there will be more job in tracking industry, maybe of different kinds. Maybe they will not be uh, drivers of 18-wheelers. Of, uh, maybe they will be dispatchers. They will be something else. There will be different jobs available. Every spiral in technological evolution uh, brings a lot more jobs than it kills. And that's historically true. Um, and uh, so I think most people understand that. I don't believe there is a lot of fear out there. I think we talk about it more than we need to talk about it. Ethics and related issues of uh, how societal changes occur is very much an empirical science. Let's try it and see what happens. A lot of th things will happen regardless of whether we try or not. Uh, it will just emerge and happen, and we will be there regardless uh, of what we do about it. So on the ethical conversation, and we'll get into it a little bit more probably on the podcast if you join me, but um, on the ethical element, I, I had a great conversation with somebody recently who said that anybody who really is getting into AI and developing it and influencing the direction of it needs to wake up on Monday mornings with the, 
with the accountability level, not of the work that they're doing for their company, for their day, for that particular mission need, but contribute to the greater good overall. So you've been doing this since the 80s. I kind of sense that you have taken that approach. Do you advise that of others as well? I, I'm afraid of, of uh, people looking at horizons uh, that are much broader than they can actually uh, influence. Look, on Monday morning, we have to come to work and answer 200 emails, and that's what we do, right? Um, so uh, let's focus on those 200 emails and what we can do better than those 200 emails. We all contribute to the well-being of society, and we do it at a local level. We'll do it by focusing on our jobs and doing them the best way possible. Uh, uh, the bigger thoughts we think, the less results we might be able to obtain, frankly. So it's not as big as and scary as some people are having this conversation it can still be on our granular level with our Very with much our so. On our granular level, we can affect a lot of positive things. And I should tell you, uh, when you think about AI, remember, all AI is wrong, some is useful. That was an excellent talk point there. Um, so, let's see. Do we have the workforce now to be developing AI? Should we be hitting up all the high schoolers that don't want to go to college and want to go immediately to army research or to a startup, become a billionaire? You know, it's so easy. Um, <laughs> I see a lot more kids who want to become billionaire than working at the army research laboratory. <laughs> how, how do we make it sexy again to do the R&D, the S&T in the government? To, to that point right there, how do you drive them away from becoming a YouTube influencer and telling us all how to put our makeup on right? <laughs> yeah, um, you know... Uh, Me, not you. We... Not... <laughs> <laughs> Personal problem. Uh, I, I, um, I hear a lot of questions about how do we uh, attract um, the best and the brightest in, into the federal workforce. Uh, this is a legitimate concern. Um, we do experience a lot of market competition. And in some uh, hot uh, fields, we really do um, you know, see almost uh, uh, inability to attract uh, uh, some of the uh, important demographics. At the same time, um, if you focus on the uniqueness of your mission, you usually find people who will love that particular mission, which will appreciate the beauty and importance of it. So, for example, when uh, people come to the Army Research Laboratory, we talk about the opportunity of doing amazing science, uh, science that can influence a lot of lives, which can save soldier lives. Uh, science that is going to make or break the future greatness of this country uh, and which will uh, be uh, tremendously cool and interesting to do for them personally. And we do find that fraction of young individuals, uh, usually young, who recently got their PhDs in uh, science, technology, uh, engineering, math, and so on. And that group loves it. They love it to work for us, they enjoy working uh, for us, we enjoy working with them. This is the right, this is the right people. There are other people who are looking for something else and they are not the right people for our organization. You will find the same probably phenomenon uh, in every organization. Every organization has some unique um, beauty of their mission and you can communicate the beauty of that mission to uh, um, to that, uh, to those people you're trying to recruit, and it works. Well, and I, I know I've spent a lot of time lately with with some high schoolers, mentoring them, and um, I, I believe that they're pursuing entrepreneurial ventures, not to become billionaires, but to put their imprint on the world in a much more mission-driven way. And they feel like designing their own company is the way to do that. So. 
if you were to speak to them today, why should they come work for you? And do they get to get their hands dirty? How do you, how did, the, how would they spend their day at ARL? Look, if uh, a young person comes to me and says, "I want to st to, uh, to to do a startup," I have an idea. Uh, should I go and work for a uh, federal for the federal government, or should I do a startup? I say, go and do startup. Honestly, um, this country is built on entrepreneurship. This is the biggest, most beautiful, most powerful force that made this country the great country that it is: entrepreneurship, private initiative, risk taking, uh, desire to go ahead and, and, and do great things and run your own company. Go and do it. Go try it. When you uh, are ready, give us a call. We would love to work with you. We love to work with startups. Uh, we believe that the government of this country uh, is great when it works well with businesses, big businesses, small businesses. When we're talking about AI, small businesses are wonderful. That's where a lot of innovation, true innovation happens. So um, let us all, if we work within the federal government or around the federal government, let's be the strong supporters of entrepreneurship. Okay, so while they're getting their training in failure out and doing startup world, although, you know, personal opinion again, um, what do we do with the existing workforce? We have a lot of demotivated, depressed, 20-year veterans in the federal workspace, and they feel like they just need to be done at 5 p.m. They'll never, like, can they, can they get excited about AI? Uh, they can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone's uh, depressed. They can. Um, look, uh, I don't think I can add much to a uh, enormous uh, literature and uh, endless uh, number of discussions about how to motivate uh, workforce. But uh, can a new and revolutionary technology like AI to uh, get somebody to wake up and uh, say, hey, I might have a new uh, line in my career. Maybe there is a, a new beginning, a, a new dawn. Uh, what if I learn some new tools and become very important and, and well-respected um, uh, worker in my organization? Yes, that can happen, and in fact, uh, yes, you should try it. Beyond uh, having conversations like this with me during your morning in lieu of 200 emails, what, how else do you spend your day? Inquiring minds want to know. Ah. Uh, you want to know everything about me. Uh. <laughs> So, uh, uh, in the army, uh, soldiers, uh, it, it is said that soldiers do three things primarily. They move, shoot, communicate. Move, shoot, communicate. So that's what I try to do. I try to move, shoot, communicate. Uh, move uh, means I try to make sure that uh, our organization is moving in the right direction scientifically, technologically, that we are moving in the right direction, pursuing um, uh, promising approaches and so on. Shoot, that means I need to help uh, our scientists, engineers, researchers to have impact on the outside world, outside of the laboratory. Uh, that's what I call shoot. Uh, and communicate is, uh, well, uh, right now is an example of what I do to communicate. I go out and I talk to people. Okay, so you have one more, only one more question. Um, and you've already given us a lot of words of wisdom, but what can you leave us with today that everybody will walk away a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser about AI? Focus on the mission. You have a mission. If you don't have a mission, you're in the wrong place altogether. If you do have a mission, focus on it, and that will tell everything you need to know about AI. Thank you so much, Alex. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you.